Alrighty, we're back with a whole new name. Um, we are reinventing ourselves a little bit. Because that's what God said to do. So, <clears throat> I want to make this short and sweet. If it's smoky in here, well, yeah, I guess you can't see it. I was cooking. That's what happens when I cook things. Um, anyway, I want to make this as simple as possible. Um, in small doses because I have a lot of things to go <laughs> over um, so basically it's tough to explain um, who God is or why we believe in God to people who don't believe in God it's tough to understand even for people who do believe in God um, and it's even more difficult for some people to believe um, in Jesus Christ and you know that's what I believe um, but I think it doesn't matter what you believe to start I think that um, you know if you are looking for the truth then you're on the right path and so we want to talk about like I wanted this to be more all-inclusive I don't want people to bypass what we have to say thinking that it's only about uh, Christian people and ultimately it is but that's not how it starts and that's not how it starts for most people you know like when when people started there were no Christians um, so we have to start at the beginning right and even if you decide not to be a Christian it's not you know my my um, path in life is, is my path in life and that doesn't mean that you're not included or that um, we don't work together to get to where we're going um, and <laughs> it's all getting weird so not that God is undoing anything 100% that I believed um, but it's I've got a new way of understanding and looking at things and all of a sudden when I read the scripture now it's like so many things occur to me and I think of it in a different way um so and I'm not the first person you know to, to think this way um I just want to simplify and go back to the beginning you know because you want to start with like all right what is God why do we believe in God you know um the shortest answer is because there's something beyond us why are we all here how did we get here how does all this work you know and I think that it's important to recognize that the first book of the Bible the first um, book is Genesis you know and it talks about how you know God went through the days and created the earth and created the animals and created the people um, you know, but it also says at the end that these are the generations of the creation. And I really believe that first book is describing the evolution of all life forms um, that ultimately ended with human beings. Um, you know, like that didn't literally happen in seven days. That's not logical. And God does not oppose science, you know. God is like this magical wisdom and knowledge that is you know beyond our understanding and a lot of times this inspiration that we get from God is this knowing that we don't know why and that's kind of how um, a lot of us I think reason through things is like you have an idea you have an inspiration uh, and then you've got to prove it to yourself and the rest of the world kind of so it's God is bigger than me, knows more than me, it's so far beyond me. It's this greatness that we don't understand, right? So, um, I wish I could read my own handwriting. <laughs> that would be super helpful. So, basically, why, like, why do we believe in God? Um, because sometimes that's what we were told. Um, sometimes because other people do, you know, and uh, mostly because I think people want to know what their reason is for being. Like, why are we here? What are we doing here? Like, what's the purpose of a human? Um, 
And people just say that we're just here to please God, and to, you know, because God wanted to, for just for his pleasure. That's not good enough. That shouldn't be good enough for you. Okay? So, for, I mean, whether it pleases God or not, at this point, we still don't know what God is. Exactly. We still don't, you know. We know it's bigger than us, more powerful than us, way smarter than us. Um, so can we say what pleases God, you know, for sure? Um, anyway, people evolve. And then, you know, the seven day thing, whatever generations, how much is a generation, you know, there's some indication that it's like three sets of 40-ish years, something around that. But then Second Peter says, that one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day to God and like God is not on earth time like that's irrelevant to him like we've got to have some way to measure things but God doesn't you know God's just the abyss of everything so why are we here we need a reason well let's think about it because there weren't books and scriptures to read at the beginning of evolution what's our reason to be and you know, I think it was Neil Donald Walsh, Conversations with God. I think that book is, is the first time I, you know, understood it this way. And, and I, that was a long time ago, and I don't know exactly what he said. But as far as I understand, you know, was that what he believed God was saying to him was that, um, like, all there was was all there was was God. And, you know, basically, if if... If what is just is, then it can't really have knowledge of itself without experience. And so it's like whatever this, you know, however this spark of life happened in what the Bible says is that God said, let us make man in our image. So um, it was, you know, could be interpreted as a, a manifestation of God's self, you know, and God's image, a, a creation of, of God. So, um, to facilitate knowledge, you know, in order to, to, um, get to the process of, of learning and wisdom, you know, you've got to have relativity and you can't have relativity without division. And you already have, you know, relatively between human and animals, um, and so when the people go forth and multiply, right, um, as you have more relativity and <laughs> more division in the people, um, you no longer have um, all of the knowledge that the, the first man had, all of the experience, because now it's a shared experience. And now it's relative and there's interaction and there's give and take and that's part of your life experience. And so as people multiply and multiply and the earth is populated um, in that loss of, I don't want to say it, like concentration of like the God knowledge, you know, it is, it's like losing yourself and adapting to this life on earth um, that you have to work for and build people and you have to deal with other people in relationships. And, you know, the ego develops that is, uh, you know, it's a protection. You've got to protect that sense of self and identity that you have. Um, and with that, you know, comes a building of opposition between people and competition. And, you know, we've got the first inklings of envy and jealousy. And then we have the first, you know, Cain kills his brother, you know, because his, his offering wasn't as good as his brothers in the eyes of God, you know? And so this is, you know, the fall of man. Like it's a super long process. It's instead of we're all enough, you know, it's this competition between each other. And, you know, and then guilt plays in and God's asking him, where's his brother? Um, and so snowball again, do, 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 do. Um, to the whole world's a shit show, 
and people are just selfish and awful and God's like, uh, that was a disaster. Let's just wipe them all out. Except for Noah, who, um, was not an asshole. And so he gets to save his family and all the animals and they're just going to start over. So it's like a total wipe out, right? So then the process starts over again with, you know, a good soul that believes in God and is faithful and like understands how to live to be productive and harmonious. And so, um, we get a, a redo, a new beginning. And then fast forward to, you know, the earth is all populated again. And then, okay, so we have now the knowledge of good and evil and we're experiencing it. And then we have, you know, the law of Moses that everyone is supposed to live by. And we have these, you know, miracles and things. And so because of these miracles and signs and like they know people know that there is a God, but then there are also people who lose faith and they're not getting what they want. So they're going to make their own gods, blah, blah, blah. So they have a, a faith that is passed down generation to generation and in these stories and history. And so we had different belief systems. And again, there's this opposition. I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. And, um, people praying to different gods and like, cause nobody still knows exactly what God is, except that there was a law, some supernatural law given to some leader, you know, and people's belief changes. And again, people naturally just want to survive and maintain, you know, maintain themselves and, you know, keep whatever they can get for themselves because that's how you survive, right? So then we have this prophecy that leads to a savior, you know, that a Messiah is going to come. And so then we have a savior come because man is no longer whole and living in the image of God. Man is not at peace. Man is at opposition with man, right? So we have Christ who comes to the earth to restore peace. Now, it's not to restore peace all at once. This is a process. Jesus said that he came to bring division. Okay? He's not bringing us peace. He's making a way for peace. Okay? And his way is to have the Spirit of God, this supernaturally um, enlightened child that has free will, like the rest of us, but has this communion with God and understands that um, he, this is, this is the plan. He knows who he is, right? And he has the desire above all other desires, above all desires of the flesh. His desire is to sacrifice himself because he knows that if he can do it, if he can prove that man can overcome the these base desires of the flesh. If, if man can um, maintain thoughts of love for every person and maintain this discipline that is not um, for the purpose of suffering, for the purpose of showing people how to treat each other, how we can bring peace again to ourselves, how we can heal mentally, physically, and spiritually. And he knows that that's his mission in life is to live this sinless life, to give everything he has, to show us how to live, um, and to be persecuted and ridiculed and bullied and murdered for it. Okay. And he knows this is his fate and he accepts his fate because that's his purpose. And he knows that this isn't the end all be all because he's not worried about himself. He's not worried about his life here on earth because he knows that his essence, his identity is in God. He is made in the image of his father, God. He knows that's his true identity and he has that sense of self. So 
he has no qualms about doing this, even though it is in the flesh and it's painful and it might be lonely. And But his pain comes from people that don't understand that this is an earthly experience, that this is temporary, that this is just... This is just a, a learning. This is just a being in that like we can live eternally as <laughs> God. You know, at like as uh, a creation of God, the image of God with him in the heavens forever. So that's a whole other thing. Okay? And so in his perfect character, he is able to defeat the deception of the flesh. Defeat the evil spirits that have no power over him. Because when your identity is in God, nothing can touch you. When you when you belong to God, when God, you know, you have to, it's available to you, you know, you just have to accept it. And you come to it in faith. And he, being the, the only person, you know, with the, the willpower and the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to do this, okay? As the Son of God um, made a way, prove it's possible for man to defeat the devil, okay? It's like he's the, the last hope, the last glimpse of, all right, God's going to redeem us. He's going to make a way to redeem us, and this is how. That's the only way. The only way to heal ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually is to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Now, he was able to do it, okay? Removing the, like, base of doubt, you know, giving us hope. Because that's the real damnation when, there, when there's no hope in the Lord. That's why our hope is in Christ, because we know that we can live again. We know that we can heal. We know that we can be redeemed we know that you know we we take on that um power through christ and that doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect we don't have to be perfect that was his sacrifice he did it it was possible so we know that it can be done we know that a human can be redeemed back to christ we know because he died and he rose again and he lives today um and that takes faith to get there. I'm not, not saying that that's what you believe. I'm saying that's what I believe and how I believe it was a long process. And that's what I want to share um, in the understanding of like, we're not just crazy people that believe in this like zombie Jesus. We're not. Um, it's a relationship. And it's a realization. The same way that you build a relationship with a person here on earth, you get to know each other. You get to know that person's character. And some relationships don't last forever because you skip steps and you don't do it the right way. And you end up with these superficial attachments and trauma bond and things that just aren't healthy. But the relationship that you want is a healthy one. It's good for you. It's nurturing. You take good care of each other. Um, and that takes time because it takes knowledge of each other to get there. And that relationship is everlasting, you know, because love is unconditional. Even if, even if you do part ways, you know, um, if you love somebody, you don't, you don't not love somebody. That's like the way it is. And if, if that's not true, then that wasn't love, you know, like most people, I think don't really understand what love is. Like love is no matter what. And <clears throat> You know, that's why we needed Jesus. That's like that our redemption is in there, right there. You know, that's what it is. It's, it's the sacrificing myself for you because just because I love you, you know, that's what he did for us. And that's what that's what we should strive for. Um, not that we have to be perfect because he was perfect, but we should strive for it. Um, so that was the purpose. But in saying that, you know, like, the misconception is that Christ came, defeated the darkness, um, overcame the devil, and it's over. The battle is won. Now, he did win that battle. That is over. 
But after the battle, there's work to do. And that's what I think is missing from a lot of our understanding is that now we rebuild the city. And that's a lot of work. And so we are in beginning this new generation. Um, and we need to <laughs> pick up our own crosses and rebuild our cities and rebuild the temple because we need a holy place where God can dwell with us. And this is the stage we're in. This is the generation we're in. This is the end time. And that is necessary. You've got to build the dwelling place within you to withstand <laughs> the times that we're we're going to be going through um because you're not going to make it without that fortress you're not going to make it um without god you know without that um faith because it's going to take some endurance and like god tells us like this is not going to be an easy time We've got to heal to be able to support each other through it until it's done done. <laughs> you know, we've got to overcome the damage, okay? So, yes, thank God Christ came. His work is not done until it's completed in us. So, um, yes, celebrate out you know like the end of a phase but like we need to do the work and we need to do it now so that's where we're starting I meant for that to be a lot shorter I'm hoping the rest will but I don't know how to get all of it out um, before then so uh, that's enough I love you please like share and subscribe we're starting over I hope the rest I'm gonna try to keep them down to um, under 10 minutes uh, I want to do that. I know this was long, but I needed to explain myself. So I love you. Please like, share, and subscribe, and get ready to work.